Hello. I would like to talk to you this evening about the benefits of stepping out your comfort zone. And my story begins with one of these, a Raspberry Pi, a very low costing computer board that you can do so much with. The possibilities are simply endless. And a couple of years ago, I decided to use it in one of my projects to code a personal assistant. It took me a long time. It's quite difficult. But I got there eventually. And I was really chuffed with what I'd made. The nice thing about the Raspberry Pi is that it's battery operated as well. So you can have a fully mobile piece of hardware. And this is what I did in this case. My chatbot was fully mobile. It was in a little box, and I put a little screen on. And you could plug a keyboard in and interact with it, and it would chat back to you. And I was really pleased with the way it turned out. So pleased that I made a little video of it. But I hesitated in uploading it. I'd previously seen people post their passion projects before and just get unfairly shot down in the comments as a result. And I also think that creatives, they take all the troubles and the mistakes and the effort of, of their project behind the scenes and they compare it with people's shop windows, that other people's polished products. And I think it puts a lot of people off showcasing their work, myself included. But I posted it anyway. And the views started to rack up. And I got my first comment, which was amazing and another comment, and another one. And I soon realized there's a whole network of creatives and artists all working together as a community to encourage and uh, work together with, uh, with ideas collectively. One suggestion kept cropping up that I um, house it in something creative other than a, a little wooden box. Now, I'm a collector of stuff. I collect old toys, bits and bobs, electronics, Anything, you never know when you might need one, something. And I have an old Furby. So what I did, I took apart that old Furby and circuit bent it. Bent it. So circuit bending is where you take a piece of wire uh, and then you locate the circuit board and you start connecting the dots a little differently to see what comes out. Sometimes that Furby went a bit, bleh, went a bit nuts. Sometimes it started smoking, so we're not doing those combination dots again. But every so often, you strike lucky and you get the mouth moving and the eyes, and you, you instantly know what controls what then. So from then on, it was easy for me to wire in the Raspberry Pi and have the chatbot um, output via the Furby. Incidentally, I went a step further with this, and I got my personal assistant to check my inbox. So now, when I get an in, uh, email come in, uh, the Furby is able to read it out, which is quite nice. And there's a video um, showing that that you can hunt out and find. Another person who saw my video was an events organizer. And he very kindly offered me a free table at a Comic Con. Now, I was hesitant about this again. Imposter syndrome crept in. And this time, I couldn't hide behind a computer screen. I'd be face to face with people. And at the very last minute, I took him up on his offer. So last minute, in fact, that I didn't have time to prepare a table at all. No display at all. That, what you're seeing there, is literally held together by sticky tape. And it taught me a very valuable lesson, that you don't have to make something polished. You don't have to make something perfect. You just have to, you just have to make something. Because people, what I found was people, they see through the fact that it looks like it's been built on Blue Peter. They see through all the roughness. And they'll home in on an idea. If your idea is good enough, people will home in on it and they'll approach you and offer to help. And in this case, I was sourcing feedback on this project. I also thought, seeing as though my personal assistant is going to meet people, I and mean, he's going to talk, and they're going to talk to it about various uh, interests and, and, and other topics, I got it to learn as well. So the more people chatted to it, the more um, it learned. And that was really good. It was really good meeting people as another way of displaying what the chatbot could do, I plumbed it, quickly plumbed it into Minecraft as well. So um, part of my display was, had the Minecraft game running and people could place blocks in the virtual world and the chat would pop up and you could interact it, with it that way. 
I also got to meet some uh, people I admire from TV and film as well. Simon from Trevor and Simon, if you remember him. Um, growing up with him, uh, watching him on TV all the time, is probably the reason why I can't pose properly in photographs. Um, and James as well. James is amazing. You've probably seen him on YouTube. Um, I'm a great admirer of his work. James was one of the first people to work out how to build a fully working BB-8 droid just from looking at the trailers um, when, when those uh, first uh, Star Wars films came out. And I got chatting with James, and he said, why not put your chatbot in, uh, in a droid? And I thought, I, I don't have the skills to build a droid. So he said, well, you work with toys. Why not put it in a, in a Star Wars toy instead? So I went on the hunt, and I found one. And we put it in and got my wire out and started circuit bending that droid and uh, got control of it. But it soon became apparent, because it's spherical, you can plug a keyboard in to interact with it. So instead, I thought about an app. An app I, I built a very simple app that communicates via Bluetooth um, so you can actually type to it. But then it opened up a whole new realm of possibilities. Voice recognition, so I can actually talk to it and it'll answer back. But I soon realized that having that app allows me to push it out to more people. So having it in a virtual app form, more people can use it rather than have a, a single piece of hardware. So I could definitely see the benefits of having it in app form. And so much so, I'm developing it even more. So this is CAS. CAS is called CAS because of the cassette interface that's on it, nothing else. Um, and I always like to give my projects names. Now, CAS is really interesting because it's being pushed out to more people. More people are chatting with it, and it's learning. Incidentally, this app is now being considered for a safeguarding app for students and pupils so that teenagers can vent their frustrations out without uh, fear of upsetting anyone, and CAS is pretty, pretty thick-skinned. The nice thing is CAS can be trained. So we can train it to be a storyteller, or we can train it to be just a general conversationist. Or, in this case, we can train it to offer helpful advice when it's needed. So what now for the chatbot? Well, myself as a teacher, I use it in the classroom. I am teaching pupils how to make their own. And I know it's been used in the classrooms as far away as America, which is just amazing. It's also been used in art installations, both in this country and in Germany, which I still can't get my head around. It's just phenomenal. And also, there's two chaps in America at the minute. They've taken an earlier version of it, and they're using it to help stroke victims um, gain some movement back in their hands and fingers. But what I would like to do is throw it out to you guys. There is an online version of it. There is a simplified version of the code. And there's also uh, an Android app that you can download and install. And I'd like you to try and connect with me in a few weeks' time with any suggestions or ideas or what you've used it for uh, and what you've found the project to be like. But there's only one more thing I have to say, and that's a very, very big thank you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you.